Hey everyone, I hope you and your family are staying safe and healthy. Um, so today we're going to look at another reading lesson. We're going to focus on how to recognize the structure of texts in different formats. As usual, these are learning objectives from the official TIS study manual. You need to know the modes such as persuasive, narrative, and expository. So those are really kind of different types of passages, right? If it's a persuasive, then the writer is trying to argue about something, right? So it, the writer is trying to convince you of his or her stance or position. And narrative, it describes an event. So it could be in a story format. And expository, uh, that's where the writer is trying to explain something, um, some mechanism or a phenomenon. So we'll have more details on the different uh, modes of text. And the second, you need to identify, compare, and contrast. So compare is to find the similarities, and the contrast is to find the differences. You need to be able to state and find the cause and effect relationship. Uh, so this is uh, usually in the mode of expository. When the uh, author is trying to explain something, um, it can be a cause and effect event. So for example, smoking causes lung diseases, right? The cause is smoking and the effect is lung diseases. All right, lastly, you need to be able to recognize a problem and a solution. So the passage may be about a problem. Um, so for example, climate change and the solution, what we can do to slow down or even stop climate change. All right, so let's look at some more details. I listed the four modes of text required by TEAS. Now in the TEAS study manual, there's really not very clear description on descriptive type of uh, passage. So hopefully if there are any questions on descriptive, it's not gonna be too hard text. First, expository, like I said, um, the writer tries to explain something. It's also known as informative. It's used to provide the readers with facts or explanation why something happens. So for example, why uh, lightning happens, right? And why do you see the lightning before you hear the thunder? Okay. Or it could be, you know, an overview on T's, informative, right? You are giving out the information on uh, what T's is about and what, uh, what the tests look like. Or it could be an essay con contrasting the pros and cons of renewable, non-renewable energy, right? So this goes back to this learning objective. So that's compare and contrast. Okay, next, persu persuasive or argumentative. So this is where the writer intends to convince readers to share the writer's perspective on an issue. Some examples are an essay where you make an argument about the earth is not flat. Or it could be an essay where you argue, oh, there's a typo there, you argue or make an argument, and make an argument that we need more policies to address climate change. So again, if you feel that the, the, the author is trying to convince you something, you know, he or she is trying to argue about a particular position or stance, that's going to be persuasive or argumentative. Okay, next one is narrative. The um, writer narrates or conveys a story, um, anecdote, or a plot. So usually if you see dialogue, characters, or a plot, um, it's probably narrative writing. Okay. I also have examples here. A fictional story um, where you write um, for your creative or writing class. Uh, so that story is narrative. Or it could be a true story about something happened to you. Maybe you experienced something uh, really exciting in your childhood and you were writing about it. That's going to be narrative. Okay. Now, descriptive, this is a, a piece of writing that describes a person, a place, a thing, emotion, situation in a very vivid way. Um, I have some examples here. A detailed description of your hometown that allows you the reader to imagine you know, what each street or landmark look like, or a profile of your grandmother that makes the readers feel that they have met her, right? So it's a very vivid description. So that's descriptive. 
All right, now, uh, again, like I said, the TEAST study manual is just not clear at all about descriptive writing. And I don't see any good examples in the study menu on descriptive. So there are some good practice questions on the other three, but not descriptive. So we will probably focus on um, the first three types of writing. I think they are most likely the on T's. So there are some keywords or phrases that you can use to determine whether it's a comparison or a contrast. If it's a comparison, that's all gonna be about similarities. So the author could say, you know, one similarity is this and another similarity is, you know, that or both, right? Or like A is like B, right? That's similarities. Likewise, similar in, in a similar fashion or in the same way, uh, as well as so this is the phrase that I see in the, in the official T's manual. It, it's not in a lot of the other kind of writing textbooks. All right, now contrast. So that's about differences, right? So again, you could talk about one difference and then another difference. Conversely, in contrast, unlike while or where, whereas, so those are used a lot, yet, but however, on the contrary, on the other hand, so those are all signal that the author is talking about the differences. Okay, now for cause and effect. Um, this is also pretty straightforward, right? something produces an event or a condition, a result. Right? So that's cause and effect. Examples of cause and effect passage. Uh, so if the writer talks about, you know, common code would cause running, running nose, that's cause and effect, or smoking and lung disease, and that's cause and effect. All right, now there are certain words and phrases we use to indicate causation. So because, since, hence, does or so, I use so a lot in my uh, recordings. And consequently, due to, therefore, as a result of, uh, oh, so we already have consequently, so cross that. Cause, um, you know, A causes B, so that's cause, lead to or led to as past tense. The sequence of if, then. So those are the two phrases I see in the official T's study menu. So added those two to um, the table that I got from Luma Learning. All right, now problem and solution, again, straightforward, right? So there's uh, existing problem and what we can do to resolve it. So normally, if the author is talking about problem and solution, it kind of follows this typical structure, but not always, right? There might be some vari variations there. And usually the author would introduce um, the problem or issue first, describe in detail what the problem is about and a possible solution to the problem. And a lot of times um, the author may, uh, you know, challenge the readers to take actions. Now, these are the common types of questions you would see on T's uh, for this particular topic. Uh, for instance, which of the following is the primary mode, oops, primary mode of the passage, right? So you have these four different options. Second, which of the following terms signals a result or a comparison? If it's a result, that's a cause and effect. If it's a comparison, that's compare and contrast. Next one, which of the following signal words or phrases indicates a comparison or a contrast? Remember, comparison is A and B are similar. So you are looking for the similarities between those two and contrast is the differences between A and B. Last one, which of the following structures is used in the passage? So is it compare and contrast, cause effect, problem solution, or persuasion and argument? All right, first practice question. There's only one question. So uh, the timer has already started. Uh, so let me reset it. There we go.
All right, if you need more time, just pause it right here and then come back. All right, now I'm gonna review the answer. So this is a passage from CDC and you can tell that this is about genetic testing, right? So it kind of um, informs the readers what genetic testing is, right? It looks for changes, uh, sometimes known as mutations or variants in the DNA. And then it talks about how the genetic tests are normally done, right? So you can see this passage is informative, right? It provides information on what genetic testing is and how it's done. So this is what kind of primary mode? It's A, expository, right? It explains things, it provides new information. Okay, next question. All right, we're going to look at this question. Um, this is about the, the glades, basically the area in Florida. All right, now you can see here, as a Floridian, I probably should have known that this area produces more than half of America's cane sugar, but I only learned that blah, blah, blah. So the author was describing uh, what um, he or she has experienced, right? So this is a type of a narrative text. Okay, so the correct answer is C. Now, some of you may pick a B, persuasive, but you can see that there's really no position presented, right? The author has not said, okay, there is a position there, we need to do something. Politicians, citizens, um, environmental uh, activists, let's all go to work, we need to address this. So there's nothing like that, right? The, the, the author has not expressed his or her opinions yet. So there's no argument there. It's really just kind of describes what the author knew and what's going on, right? What's going on in this particular kind of event, and just the author's experience. So that's a narrative. All right, next question. All right, so hopefully you selected the correct answer, which is persuasive. Now, why is it persuasive? Read the first sentence. The Bell Glade monitor routinely showed good air quality on the EPA air quality index. But look at the next sentence. The country's air monitoring system is ill-equipped to detect pollution in the Glade. So the author is saying that even though the monitor program shows good air quality, we think that the monitoring system is really ill-equipped to provide any reliable results. All right, so how do we prove this? We have, you know, three reasons. One, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Now, I have a note here. Um, the, the passage is actually pretty long because there are three reasons listed. So I only include, included the first reason. Now, the author is trying to argue that 
you know, the routine monitoring is not reliable. And then he or she is listing all the evidence um, to kind of support that argument, right? So all these reasons are arguments that are intended to convince the readers that the monitoring program is not sufficient. It actually does not provide reliable results. All right, we are done with another lesson. Good job, everyone. So, you know, I always say this, if the video is helpful, feel free to subscribe, like the video and leave me a comment, especially if you have questions. And feel free to share the video with someone who you know may need these videos to prepare for teas. All right, thank you guys. I will see you next time.